Hi guys. Did you really think that I was going to look this glamorous all the time like I was in the last part of this video? No. It's been a couple days and I was like, okay, let's finish up this half of the video so that way we can get this out to you guys. So here we are. I'm looking at my most glamorous self. I got the ponytail up. I got no makeup on. I have the same t-shirt on though. So there is some consistency going on here. Again, don't mind the background. So let's get into Sheena and Shay and Sheena overall this season. So this is going to be kind of the second chunk of this video and then we'll have one third chunk and then we'll kind of wrap it up, okay? So Sheena and Shay. So Sheena and Shay, basically, they got married last season and then we find out this season that essentially Sheena has been acting like their relationship is so amazing. It's so wonderful. Oh my God, we have the best relationship ever. He loves me so much. He'd do anything for me. Meanwhile, Shay's over in the corner doing pills and drinking his face off and has all these problems. And according to Shay, he's had these issues for about two years now. So this happened before they were married. So either Sheena is like oblivious and Shay hit it really good or Sheena's so self indulgent and only worried about herself that she never really paid attention or noticed how her husband was behaving and acting boyfriend fiance at the time. So we just keep kind of going back. Like this is one of the seasons that Sheena, in my opinion, was, it was it like looking back now in the moment, I was like too young to understand, I think what was going on and like how this was affecting the group and the way that Sheena kind of like went along with this whole story and whatever. But like looking back now, I can see that this group of people were literally not equipped to deal with somebody with an addiction problem. Because in my opinion, there were multiple people in that group that also had addiction problems, that were also doing substances, that were also alcoholics. Two of which we know for a fact are Lala and James. The rest of the group has never been confirmed to be those things, but you take what you want with that information, okay? Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. So we start off the season with that birthday party that she had and you can tell that Shay is kind of like wandering around. He's not really close with Sheena. Sheena's kind of always looking for him and is like, where's my husband? Where's my husband? Where's my husband? And you can kind of tell that Shay's just like off. Well, then we learned that Shay's off because he ended up deciding to leave her completely for a couple days and basically not communicate with her, not communicate with the friends. And everybody's kind of like, what the hell's going on? And Sheena kind of uses this as her excuse for everybody to kind of feel bad for her and pity her. It makes me laugh because every, like recently Sheena has talked about how like the seasons are never about her. What I think she meant to say was that the seasons are never positively about her. Because every season, there is always usually a storyline that's heavily about Sheena. And she has some of the biggest moments of her life on this television show. She's, I think it's another reason possibly why she wants to be friends with everybody. So she always stays on the show. She always is relevant on the show. Because she knows if she is friends with everybody, then the likelihood of her being on camera with them is a lot higher than if she just sided with one group, which is I think is one of the reasons why she's struggling this season is because she really, the girls should have gotten together and really ostracized Tom and Tom. and But instead they wanted camera time and here we are on the haterade right now of Sheena and honestly Lala, which I hope Lala is doing good because she is pregnant. Like I obviously don't wish any harm to her or her baby and any ill will in that way. I just hope that they kind of see that, it, like, what, is it worth being friends with everybody when two of the people that you're trying to be friends with are absolutely miserable and horrible and your excuses make no sense? And same thing this season, like Sheena makes everything about herself. She makes Shay's drug addiction and alcoholism about herself. Later on in the later on in the season, we'll see when I recap that. They like Sheena clearly doesn't know how to handle the alcoholism portion of it. The pills part is one thing, but she clearly doesn't understand how to deal with the alcoholism part. And honestly, none of them really do. <laughs> it's it's disturbing. Like Sheena wants to say that the show has never been really about her, or like the seasons haven't been about her, but she had her wedding last season. 
She had her 30th birthday this season. She had a storyline about Shay's drug alcohol addictions, which was a big, a very big storyline on the show this season. The next season, like the end of the season, I think in the next season, she uh, decides to get divorced. So that's a storyline. Then she has a new guy that she dates for a while. That's a huge, like Rob, that was a huge thing for her in that relationship. And then she has a storyline with another one of the guys that she's hanging out with and she gets him a penguin, which is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's hilarious. And then she obviously starts dating Brock and then that's a whole thing. And then she wants to get married to Brock and that's a whole, it's like, it never ends with Sheena. So it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you mean you don't get painted in the best light. Okay. Because that just is what it is. Like, this is what happens when you're on everybody's side. Sometimes you're not going to get painted in the best light. So I just don't understand that part. I think she, I think what she meant to say was she just doesn't have the best season every, she's never had a good season essentially where she's kind of come up on top. Every season she kind of gets shit in question about every single thing. Maybe that's what she meant. So Sheena kind of ends up having like a breakdown at work and is basically trying to get pity from everybody of like, you guys, you know, I don't have, especially with Lala getting harassed by the girls and Lala feeling bad. Lisa Vanderpump is kind of like, hey, you guys need to like, you need to lay off a of Lala. Like she, remember you were the new girl. Now she's a new girl and you can't like gang up on her. You wouldn't have loved that when you were the new girl, blah, blah, blah. And she just like, you don't understand. Okay, you don't understand. I have way more crazier things happening in my life right now that do not pertain to Lala. It's like, oh God, here we go. So this is when we start slowly learning about what's going on. And she wants to involve the group in the conversation, AKA she wants to use his drug and alcohol addiction and produce it to be on television. In my opinion, in my opinion, that's what I feel like is happening. Again, another example of here is someone with actual problems in their actual life, not the reality show life, their actual life. And instead of getting this person help and supporting them, we just use it as a storyline and lay it out to dry. Which Lisa Vanderpump continues to do to this day. Let's things be storylines, but won't actually take the money and the privilege that she has and help these essentially kids that are in their fucking early 20s help them get better please explain that to me if i had millions of dollars that lisa vanderpump had has not even had has i would be helping my cast out so hard in making their recovery the storyline not making them be miserable and horrible and using that as my storyline but that's just me and i'm not a millionaire and i'm probably never going to be so I guess I'll never be able to help people like that, but what do I know? So Sheena decides to have the group come over and she essentially wants him to come home and she wants them to be there and sit and talk with him and have a conversation with him about like, what's going on? How can we help? What can we do? And so they all come together and it's Ariana and Tom and it's other Tom and Katie and you know, Sheena and Shay. So they come to the apartment, which the apartment is essentially a shrine to Sheena. It's just picture after picture after picture. And I'm not talking like cute family photos in the background. I'm talking like poster size, canvases of, the, of them all over the apartment. It's so cringy. It's chuggy, okay? It's very chuggy. Uh, are the kids saying chuggy anymore? I don't think they are. I truly don't think the kids are saying chuggy anymore. Uh, so they come over, they sit down. Shay walks in and they're like, hey, God, hey buddy, how you been? And he goes to hug Sheena and just starts sobbing. And you can tell that this man is truly hurt. Like this is not, a, again, this is not for him a TV show problem. This is a real life, he has a true issue and a true addiction problem that he, like someone needs to take it seriously. You know, and Sheena takes it seriously in a very, in my opinion at the time, in a very like performative way versus digging down deep and getting the best treatment, getting the best health, getting the best support for your partner as humanly possible. Like it's, it's like, it's almost like it comes off to me and I know this sounds mean, but this is what it 
felt like watching doesn't mean that it's true doesn't mean that's how she actually felt doesn't mean this is how Shay felt obviously but to me it comes off like his addiction was an inconvenience to their life was an inconvenience to Sheena and what Sheena wanted to do what Sheena wanted to be where Sheena wanted to go it felt like him having a problem was an inconvenience to Sheena's life that's just the vibe that I kept getting watching it especially in this episode specifically when they were all talking to him on the couch so they kind of were like hey buddy what's going on like what's like what's happening and he's like well I needed to get away for a while like I needed to you know get my head on straight essentially and you can tell Tom and Tom are almost having like a midlife crisis or something like they're looking and even Schwartz I think says it in one of his confessionals where he was basically like you know we're getting too old to be doing this dumb shit and I'm like yeah bro and you're still doing it you're 40 years old and you're still doing dumb stuff and you're still acting like complete idiots you're dating essentially children 20 something year old little girls I don't know what you're I don't know what you're doing the man child is still existing within the two toms and they are kind of shocked when they listen to him talk about how many pills he would take. He's like, some days I'd take like five, but some days I've taken like 10. And they were like, whoa, what? And you can kind of see that Ariana and Katie are, they, they are taking it seriously. They're understanding the gravity of it. And they seem like they genuinely want to be there and help and support. Whereas Tom and Tom, it's like, it's like it's like a joke or to not not a not a joke but like they don't get it they don't understand that this is a genuine problem that he has to go get help and fix they just think it's kind of like oh bro it's like fine let's just stop drinking like, no what's the big deal like just stop doing pills like oh and it's like no you you can see when they're listening to him talk about the situation you can see like light bulbs going off in their head and they're just like whoa what's huh like what and in the conversation they start kind of having the conversation about like Sheena and like what's going on with him and like her and Shay and essentially she starts freaking out and you know why did you marry me and you know of course everybody's like Sheena stop like calm down She's like why did you marry me then why did you marry me and he was like, because I love you. And to give Shay credit, he was so calm in this moment and so respectful in this moment, more than honestly anybody else in that room other than Katie and Ariana, which Katie and Ariana were just smart from the fucking jump, let me tell you right now. And so he tells Sheena that basically like, you don't listen to me, you talk over me. I don't feel like I'm essentially emotionally safe with you. And she was like, okay, well then you need to stop me. Or like, you need to speak up and say something, or you need to call me out. And as like they're doing this, she's talking over him. And Katie and Ariana are like, exhibit A girl, like right here, you need to listen to your husband and you're not. And she was like, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> and then they kind of, and again, instead of, getting him the support and the help that he probably needed like a therapist rehab all these things you know something okay something uh Sheena thinks the way to help him is to make him do a piss test and he but he's allowed to smoke marijuana he's allowed to he's allowed to smoke marijuana but if he has drugs in his system there he's in he's gonna be in trouble and then Tom Sandoval is like, oh, like, we'll just get you healthier. Like, we'll work out with you and we'll get you egg whites and uh, broccoli and we'll call it good. And that'll help you totally. Now, to be fair, you can't do anything if you don't have the right tools in your toolbox. I'm a very big proponent of that. Like, you don't know what you don't know. And so these people might not know or understand how to help people in these situations, but I would think, like, I just know my first instinct, if one of my friends told me they were a drug addict and told me they were an alcoholic, the first thing I would do is be like, okay, do we have a therapist? Can we start, like, at least let's start there. Let's get you a therapist. 
let, like let's find a professional or a doctor that understands this and that we can talk to and we can come up with a plan on how to get you in the right steps. Also, let's go find an AA meeting. There's about a billion of them and I know you know they have them because in the first season, Jax went to a AA meeting with Laura Lee because she was a drug addict and an alcoholic or whatever and was doing some crazy shit and he went with her. So I know they know they exist. So why did you not go, hey, let's bring you to Alcoholics Anonymous or let's bring you to a, a Drug Addicts Anonymous. But I think that's what Laura Lee was at. I think she was at like a Drug Addicts Anonymous. Let's go bring you there. Like there's so many things that I think are just commonly known things to do when someone is struggling in those departments. Like you don't have to get too advanced and too crazy, but it's like, and then again, at what point did LVP step in and go, okay, let me help you. How can, like, how can I help you? What can we do? Like, I try to think, I try to remind myself that essentially like Lisa Vanderpump is the producer of the show. So essentially she is a boss. Okay. So if we're thinking about like us as normal people having a job, she's a boss, you're the employees. Our bosses should be protecting us and helping us and keeping us safe and giving us good health, like health care, giving us good support and making sure we're okay. What? Anybody want to, did anybody want, uh, like, I would love to know, I'm being so genuine right now, I would love to know anybody at Bravo and anybody on that staff and anybody in LVP's camp that actually helped Shay. I would love to know if that happened. I have a dark feeling that did not happen in any way, shape, or form. That they just let this man out to dry. Because I do believe 1000% with my whole heart that they did the same thing to Rachel. Where they were like, oh, you're not going to use your addiction for your storyline? Fuck that. Get out of here. You're going to go to a mental institution, but you're not going to come back? Bye. Like, Bravo didn't pay for that mental institution? That's the thing that, like, really bothers me is these are your employees and you're not helping at all. It, it's just, ugh. It makes me kind of sick and nauseous. And, you know, we kind of get an admission from Shay, too, that... Instead of paying bills and helping out in that department, he was taking pills. Instead of paying the bills, he was taking pills. And the thing is, is like Sheena, I think in almost all of her like serious long term, like her real serious long term relationships, except for Rob, she's kind of been the breadwinner. She's been the one that makes the most money. She's the one that is financially like stable in the group. And Shay kind of was doing his own music thing and trying, I think, to be a producer, it sounded like, or something to that sort. And it doesn't sound like he was making, like, money money. It sounded to me like Shay didn't have, like, an actual nine to five. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't a waiter or a waitress. He didn't have anything like that. Like, Sheena was the one doing that stuff. And so Shay could kind of, like, go do his own thing, make music, and live his own life. And... Somewhere in there, I'm sure what happened is kind of what's happening between Sheena and Brock kind of right now is this whole heteronormative of like, you men, you have job, you provide. And I'm sure that got in the way of their relationship. And that was really hard for him that he was not providing and that he wasn't coming up with the bills and that he was using his addiction to like using money that he was making to feed his addiction I just don't understand how Sheena only recently knew. I don't, I don't believe that. Lisa Vanderpump said on the show that she's known for like nine years or some shit like that. But Sheena's like, no, no, no. I just, I just found out. I just found out this is happening. I'm like, he was taking money from you. You're the main breadwinner. So you tell me that that really happened. I don't believe that. That's just me though. Like, I feel like you would see in your bank account that things were leaving and exiting. And why I know this is because when he ended up leaving, I believe on the show they talked about how he funneled a shit ton of, he took all the money out of her bank account essentially and said, bye and left. So you clearly have some, you clearly have a joint bank account that you can see what he's doing. So you didn't notice like random amount of money just coming out on a regular basis. Like, I just call bullshit on like, this is a shock and a surprise. I just don't think it was. I think it was kind of like, a, oh, it doesn't bother me. Oh, it's not my problem. 
But when it starts becoming my problem, then I'll give a shit about it. That's the vibe I was getting. One of the things that was so cringy and so sad to honestly to watch is like Ariana and Katie took Sheena out. I think they were getting their nails done and like, it was so weird. It was like a nail van or a nail trailer on the side of the road. And they just like walked in and they're just like getting our nails done. And they were talking about everything and Sheena kept being like, he's going to do everything in his power to make sure I'm the happiest woman alive and that he stays with me and we have the best marriage ever. I was like, and Katie and Ariana are like, but we're not, we're not worried about you right now. We're worried about your husband. And when you get your husband better and healthy, you guys will be healthier and happy and everything will be good. But they just like, Sheena just doesn't seem to grasp that that they need to focus on him. Like she can't do that. It doesn't work in her brain to worry about another human being. That like the only time I've ever seen her on the show, okay, on the show, in her real life, I have no idea. The only time I've ever seen her step outside of herself and protect another human being at all costs, emotionally, physically, whatever, is literally been her daughter. Her daughter is like her entire world. No matter what I ever say about that woman, no matter what I say about Sheena, no matter what I say about any of these people, I feel in my heart that they are all incredible mothers. That I actually believe and I actually feel that they are very good, present, participating mothers. Especially Sheena because she has such a strong anxiety about not being around Summer and wants Summer to be with her at all times. So... We know that Sheena can step outside of herself and want to love and support another human being. But in this time frame, on this season of Vanderpump Rules, was not happening at all. And they have it, like, there's two times where one, they went out in this first chunk of the season. They went out and they were going to a restaurant and the guys were like, hey, where's Shay? And she was like, oh, he's like staying home. Like he doesn't want to be around alcohol right now. So like, I thought I'd come out and hang out. He's totally fine. He's fine at the, you know, he'll play video games or something. And it's like, okay, like you're not wrong in the sense of like, you shouldn't be held hostage in your home. I understand that. You should be able to go out and do whatever you want. But he's in the beginning stages of trying to be a sober person and trying to get his life back on track and trying to be healthy. I just feel like you should be there for him and supporting him and find things to do together that don't involve alcohol. Or if you're going to be around people, you should stop drinking with him so that way you can be a good support system for him for right now until he gets it under control and feels like he can be around people that are drinking. This is a whole thing that happened with Carl and Lindsay too. Like Lindsay worked, Lindsay essentially like stopped drinking with Carl to help him out and be a good support system with him. You know, why, obviously that's not turning out great anymore, but why couldn't you do that for him so you could help him? Like, do you have an alcohol problem? Do you feel like you have to be held down by that? Do you feel like you're not able to have a social life without alcohol around? Like clearly we, we see that Lala in the future, Lala has clearly found a way to be around people who drink all the fucking time and is completely fine. So, we know it's possible that you can do that and you can support him, but she doesn't do that. No, 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 she doesn't do that. And then she convinces him to come to Pride, which obviously Pride was a shit show because we learned that about James and you know that whole situation, but there's a fuck ton of drinking and drugs around that stuff. It just is what it is. Like, it just is what it is. And it's just sad to me that you're like, like you should have just worked Pride found Shay, picked him up and like gone and done your own thing or find something else to do after. But you having him there where everybody's like, the bartenders are drinking for God's sakes. Jax is like fucking out of his goddamn mind drunk slash probably concerned because his eyes were like, so it's like, come, come on, seriously, come on. Why put him in an area, in a space where he's going to have to constantly be battling that feeling of, am I allowed to drink? Should I be drinking? Should I be doing this? Should I be like, why do that? It's just, it was very, it was very disturbing, very disturbing. I did feel really bad that Sheena ended up changing her name this particular season because they end up getting divorced like within the same couple months. 
she like goes and gets her license and changes her name and she's so excited and blah 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 I'm a wife blah 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 living in this like you know crazy ass bliss only to be getting divorced like a couple months later I just felt really really bad about that like Sheena I hope with Brock is different like it feels like to me as long as like you're good you have no issues then I have no issues but once you start having problems and issues like I said that's a problem for me so you need to keep your problems and your issues to yourself okay I'm not it's all the world revolves around me I think that's why her and Brock kind of work and I don't know if like she said it in an after show recently like she doesn't really want Brock to have a nine to five she really loves their life right now she loves how she can go work her ass off and do her things and Brock can be involved in all that but he's also very present for his daughter I think that's it would just be interesting if that dynamic change in the world like didn't revolve around Sheena what that would kind of possibly look like it would be very very interesting um we leave off with Sheena and Shay saying that they're going to go to therapy together and they're going to try to work through their issues and their problems that way and figure figure it out uh they do go on a trip where alcohol is involved too that that did not help either it's very messy 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 very messy um it doesn't get better clearly they get divorced so it definitely does not get any better um and I thought to myself could you imagine doing therapy with Sheena she's like oh my god so like listen everybody is trying to is, is after me like I just want to be friends with everybody like I don't understand what the problem is like help me like you help me understand like what is the problem like I'm good as gold like I don't get it <laughs> so fucking insane so in regards to Sheena's friendships with everybody this season we have the first glimpse of Ariana really questioning their friendship and their relationship and one of the things that always pissed me off is Sheena said one time I wish everyone gave me a direct reason to hate someone and Ariana is like I'm a direct reason why you should hate certain people or why you shouldn't be around certain people or why you shouldn't support certain people I'm your best friend and here's this person who's evil to me and the whole season Sheena wants to be friends with everybody but to her own detriment and to her friend's detriment and she's picking like the wrong side of of everybody and everything and it's it's really really sad because it's like ariana is like like listen like it's not just like someone like doesn't like me and i don't like them and it just kind of is what it is we're talking about kristen who like actively said on television like she wanted her to get hit by a bus and like die you know we're not talking about randomness we're talking about this person has tried to ruin ariana's life actively tried to ruin her life and very disgusting miserable ways last season and she also is mean to sheena she's mean to kristen's mean to everybody so why do you even want to like one of the questions for me is like why do you even want to be friends with her like that happened this season on season 11 at the beginning where katie was like you can be friends with schwartz like that doesn't bother me what bothers me is why would you want to be he's not a good friend why do you want to be friends with somebody who isn't a good friend and it's the same thing in this situation you can be friends with whoever the hell you want why do you want to be friends with this person though they're toxic they're mean they're nasty and they'll turn on you in two seconds five kristen Doty will turn on your ass in two seconds flat okay not even 0.5 okay and the fact that you want to keep inviting her to things keep having her involved in shit I, I I definitely saw where Ariana was I definitely understood where Ariana was coming from and questioning Sheena's loyalty to her when clearly Ariana has done nothing to Sheena other than be an incredible friend an incredible human being and has always supported her and still to this day does and Sheena just shows time and time again that she's just not a good friend to Ariana I would not be friends with somebody that wants to be friends with everybody I, I wouldn't want to be with someone who's constantly making excuses and constantly trying to be with toxic people, especially people that my best friend, my best friend actively has issues with. That doesn't really make any sense to me. 
And, like, all the examples that she brings up to Kristen about, like, what's, you know, what are the issues with the problem. And, you know, telling, giving examples to Kristen of, like, how she's a toxic person or a bad person. They're all about her. She doesn't bring up, like, Ariana. It's like, you're a pain in my ass and I can't invite you to shit because everybody hates you because of what you did to Ariana and how horrible you were to her. And how, it's like, you can be mad at Tom, but, like, leave Ariana alone, you know? And, but that never comes up. She, Shana, Shana never does that. It's always about how has it affected her? How has it tortured her? What are the issues? And it's like, she just kind of doesn't really care. And the same thing's kind of happening this season too. Very much foreshadowing of, like, your best friend is being tortured, like, tortured by this human. And you just are like, nah, get over it. It's fine. Don't, don't worry about it. And if it's not, again, if it's not affecting Sheena directly, it doesn't matter to her. And even when it is directed at her directly, she still wants to be friends with these people. I don't understand why you want to be friends with these people. Why would you want to be friends with Chris and Jody? It's beyond fucking me. Like a real friend. Not, I'm not talking about TV. I'm talking about a real friend. She, Kristen's insane. She's insane. I, I just hate that Sheena loves, Sheena loves to be the devil's advocate all the time. And it's like, well, who is it that Ariana said, like the devil doesn't need an advocate. And I agree. Like you can't, why are you always seeing it from everybody's angle and everybody's side? Sometimes this person's angle is the only angle. Sometimes people are just bad people doing bad things and need to be not given the opportunity to be friends with them over and over and over again, forgiving them all the time. Sometimes they just need to lay in their bed and get over it and they have to deal with it. They made their choice. They've done what they've done. It is what it is, but Sheena can't do that. And it's so interesting to me. The same thing kind of goes with Lala. It's like one, and she does the same thing either this season or the next season where she sides a lot with James too. And it's just another example of Sheena is constantly trying to make sure she's friends with everybody so she can stay on camera. And in this season, she, I hate Lala, I hate Lala, I hate Lala. But then all of a sudden it's like, oh, Lala's getting a lot of storylines. Like maybe I need to be friends with her. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, give Lala a chance. Oh, see where Lala's coming from. And it's like, pick a lane, Linda, pick a lane. And she is, does kind of this, like, the thing about Katie is it's like, you're right. You know what? We shouldn't hate on Lala as much as we are. It's kind of stupid and pointless. There's no reason for it, you know? But also, like, why, why can't you see where, like, I just wish that sometimes they would have a lot more adult conversations on this show. Like, I wish Sheena kind of would have had the brain with all to kind of go up to Katie and just be like, hey, Katie, so, like, why don't you like Lala? Like, what is actually the issue? And I think a lot of it stems from Tom, not necessarily from Katie. It stems from a lot of insecurities. That's where it all kind of comes from. And to have a deep conversation with, with Katie and be like, hey, like, maybe Lala isn't the problem. Maybe your insecurities are clouding your judgment on Lala and that Lala isn't a really affecting you and your life. And maybe you don't need to be friends with her, but we don't need to try to like take her down, you know? It just would have been interesting to have that kind of conversation because I don't know, Lala definitely, oh God, we'll talk about Lala in just a second. Lala really was like, oh, I'm gonna be the villain. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So that's kind of Sheena and Shay's roundabout storyline for the whole season uh for, not for the whole season dear god for the first portion kind of of the season again there's so many episodes there's so many fucking episodes it's crazy it's insane this is when they used to just beef the flip out of episodes they were like oh we're gonna have like a 25 episode season now they're like we can barely get 10 out of this shit like holy holy hell uh, but they get a, they got a lot out of it. All right. So the last portion of this is going to be about Lala and Jax and Brittany. So we have a new girl, Lala comes in and Lala really comes in like hot and heavy. She's super hot. She's got a mouth on her. 
she can stick up for herself. She's from Utah. Lauren from Utah is like what people joke about. Lauren from Utah. And she came here and basically like the vibe is she's here to give a BJ to get on a PJ to find her a man. That's the vibe that is coming off. And they instantly slut shame this girl, like instantly slut shame her. And I have been a Lala apologist since the first time she showed up on camera, pretty much all the way until this season, this season when I was like, you lost me. Like what you're doing makes no sense. The way that, and the words of Lala, the way you're moving doesn't make any sense. And you're extremely frustrating right now. And I need you to, to like work a little harder on trying to figure out why you're saying the things that you're saying, the people you're aligning with and the people that you're giving the time of fucking day. So that's been really hard for me because I've loved Lala for years. Cause I think Lala was like the perfect push for the group, for the group of girls because the girls really started having like a hive mentality, especially when Stassi was there and they started getting very territorial and like nobody can come into the group. It was so fascinating though that like, it was the single girls that can't come into the group. You know what I'm saying? Like Brittany got to come into the group immediately. Everybody loved Brittany. Nobody had issues with Brittany. Everybody thought Brittany was so amazing, wonderful, and like iconic. But Lala and Sheena, fuck no. If there's the scent of a slut vibe, they're like, nope, can't have you. And they treat them like garbage. Absolute garbage. I would be really interested to find out how Lala actually got casted for the show. I'm sure the information's out there. I'm sure she's probably talked about it 100% and I could probably find that out, but it would be interesting to find out how she actually got casted on the show because Rand, I feel like Randall already knew LVP. I could be completely wrong, but I thought, I feel like they already knew each other. Again, I could be completely wrong, but Lala, I believe if I remember correctly, I thought she essentially like no joke, literally got like casted essentially. They like put a web out and they were like, cause that's how Charlie got on the show. Charlie got casted to be on the show. She didn't work at the restaurant. They were like, we need new people want to come over. And she's like, okay, ah, that's what I think. Also bring Charlie back as a full-time cast member. Like what the hell? Uh, Again, Katie is kind of instantly not vibing with her, does not like Lala, wants to expose her for being, again, a slut. And like, oh, your profile picture, you're half naked. Oh, where are you actually going? Oh, why are you leaving work? Oh, you don't cover your shifts. Oh, you know, why are you flying on a jet? And she's just like, yeah, I'm flying on a jet. And what? You can too. Like, I'm, I don't actually have a photo shoot in wherever, France, Rome, England, I'm actually going to party and be some eye candy. And what? What is the problem? You know, and I think a lot of, at the time, not anymore, but I think a lot of Katie's hatred of Lala really had to do with her insecurities and her and Tom's relationship. And not necessarily about Lala specifically. And it's funny because Katie's logic makes no sense in comparison to Tom's modeling jobs, but it's actually true that Lala is hanging out with older men. Like her logic of like, well, I, my husband, my boyfriend, sorry, my boyfriend, he like, um, has never been asked to go, you know, here, here, here. Like they have models over there. They have models in like Milan. They don't need models from here. And it's like, sweetie, he does like catalog modeling. Let's be for real, please. Let's stop acting like Tom is doing these huge campaigns for like fucking Versace and shit. That's not happening. So I'm sorry, Lala's not going to be in the next JCPenney. W wake up. It's funny that when Lala gets the opportunity to go away and go on a trip to, again, essentially get like to go on a private jet, like for free and, you know, do her own thing and live her, this fun little fantasy that the girls have all these excuses in the world why that's a bad idea but they also come up with every excuse in the world to not work. They're constantly going on vacations all the time and not working. They're constantly finding ways to get the whole group to leave sir and to not like do shit together. And it's like, so how come when Lala does it, you guys don't like it, but when you guys do it, when you guys are the entire staff leaving sir for that for a, like four days, you know, when Tom Sandoval wants to go play dumpster trucks off in a corner in Vegas, that's totally fine. But when you guys see Lala doing it, not okay. I was like, pick, pick and choose, 
pick and choose. Lala and James kind of like come on, they basically like attach to each other and they just start kind of vibing together and they're the young ones in the group. They're the ones always causing trouble. James is always mouthing off. Lala's always mouthing off too. So they kind of like get together. And again, I think I already said it, that they kind of made like an agreement essentially once James broke with Kristen of like, we're going to hang out. We're going to vibe. If we make out and if we do it, cool. But we're not together. So we can do our own thing, but we're not going to embarrass each other. Well, obviously we know that that didn't happen um, because James completely embarrassed her and was a complete asshole. And Lala always jokes around about how like she doesn't really understand why she likes James because James is like not her type like Jax is clearly more of her type because she likes a little beefcake but she just keeps getting drawn to him and it, it she, I think she joked at one time that it has to it must be like the DJ thing Lala also like has this little gangster side to her which is like it's just so ick and I've done this before too because you think you're so cool and you're not fucking cool you're an ignorant idiot when you watch white people, especially white women, no, actually white men are worse, but when you watch white people try to be like gangsta and like a rapper and like pow, 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 it's like, stop, stop. You're not black, okay? But stop. You're a white girl from Utah. You don't have to talk like that. You don't need to say that you're a gangster and all this shit. Like, take it down a couple notches. That is one thing that has always been a big ick to me when it comes to Lala. I'm like, Lala, you're a white girl from Utah. Let's be for real right now, please. Uh, Lala and James make music together and we get the first little glimpse of, ain't nobody got me bailing like I'm bailing you, like I'm bailing you, like I'm bailing you. Everybody, please put your hands up. I don't know about the keys, the hands up. Yeah, so we get the first kind of glimpse of that. It sounds way better, but you know, copyright infringement. So they finally start making music together, and that's like a big thing of why they're like, oh, it's so sexy together. Lala actually has a very good voice. I wonder what her voice sounds like now. The last thing she did was that Christmas song, I think, or like Apples. Is that what it was? Something with Lala. I mean, something with Sheena. And I correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure Lala's a pretty good singer, like a good re regular old girl singer. Okay, she's not Whitney Houston and Beyonce, but she's also you know not karaoke girl. She's pretty. She's pretty damn good. And honestly, as the seasons go out, she has a couple other bops, and they're actually really good. And she's very talented. So it's very interesting to watch. Uh, Lala and Jax. I just wish they would have hooked up. Like they go back and forth and Lala's like, well, you know, are you still dating Brittany? And he was like, well, you know, yeah, but like kind of not like we're just trying to figure it out. And she was like, oh, well then is it okay if you go to dinner with me? And he's like, yeah, sure. Like, I guess so. It shouldn't be an issue. And she's like, relax. Like we're just going on like a dinner. We're just going to dinner. I'm not going to like suck your dick. And he's like, it's like, girl, don't say that to a guy. That's what I'll think about. And so she's all, she's definitely trying to flirt with Jax because Jax is more of her vibe. And she's flirting with James. And then that causes a whole thing with James and Jax because obviously the Kristen thing bothers James. And now Lala's gonna bother. It's just a mess. Lala's making a mess. And James is back and forth. Like one minute he's like, oh good, I love you so much. Like you're so amazing. We can make great music together. And then the next minute she's he's like, slot, slot, slot. So it's just constant back and forth of them battling each other. Uh, they love each other. Oh my God. Oh you're my bestie oh yeah we're besties <laughs> and then the next one it's like fuck you slot you're awful i hate you and they just do this like all season long it's like a back and forth battle because honestly they like i think even lala's admitted like the reason why her and james even hooked up is because she's an alcoholic and she was so drunk all the time doing stupid shit and so is james and so when you have two drunk people in the room and you're friends and you like hanging out and you're attractive it's like that's what happens so i mean that's kind of where that happened I really wish that, I really do wish that Jax and Lala hooked up. And sometimes I wonder what it would have been like if they were a couple. It would have been completely venomous, vile behavior. Kind of like how I think Kristen and Jax are meant to be together. It would be awful, but it would be entertaining. And they would have been crazy. I mean, at one point Jax is like, oh, like I would have like destroyed her. I'm like, see, we didn't have, we didn't have sex, but you know, I would have destroyed her. I'm like, you're disgusting, bro. 
So obviously we have the whole that whole relationship. We have Lala always kind of being around the guys and being around Jax. But meanwhile, Jax is entertaining this girl named Brittany. And they met in Vegas. And I'm pretty sure Katie introduced them, I believe it was. Uh, they were at Vegas doing something and Brittany was there. And she's from Kentucky. She's Brittany's from Kentucky. She seems very nice and very sweet. And Brittany's kind of always seemed nice and sweet. She just always defends Jax for the dumbest shit. Like, he's a bad person. And she's constantly being like, it's sorry. He didn't mean it. Or sorry. Da, da, da. And then she'll go back and, like, berate him. I'm like, why deal with this bullshit? Like, I, I, I'm, I genuinely hope they get divorced. Because Brittany can do so much better. So much better. There's so many men out there that would treat her ten times better than this dope does. So they met in Vegas and it's funny because one, one time, like when he's with Brittany, he calls Brittany his girlfriend. But when he's not with Brittany, he's like, oh no, we're not a couple. We're not together. We're just hanging out. We're just vibing. We're just fine figuring it out. And he's trying to convince everybody she's not moving here. She's not moving here. I promise you, she's not going to move here. She's not. And then if she does move here, she's not living with me. Well, then she moves here and they were like, oh, she's not living with you. Is she? Oh, she's not going to live with you. Oh, oh, no, no, no. That's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Meanwhile, cut to, they're sitting on the couch together in his little closet hole of a apartment. And it's like, I think we should move in together. And it's like, oh my God, Jesus Christ. It's sad because Brittany honestly is the best thing that ever happened to Jax. And Jax just shat on it and ruined it. Completely ruined it. And he just had a perfect life set up for him. And he was like, Fuck that perfect life. I don't give a shit about that. And okay, so Jax tried to get Brittany a job at Sir, which was hilarious. She used to work at Hooters. She used to work at Hooters. So she has experience. And Lisa Vanderpump is like, literally no. Like, I'm not just gonna have your flavor of the week here. Like, that's not fucking happening. And he's like, well, she's moving here. And she's like, what? No. And she tries to come in like two different times. One time she comes in basically like a napkin. Like she barely had any clothes on. And then the other time she came in, she didn't bring her resume. And so Lisa was like, no. So Brittany ends up working at Hooters, which is hilarious in LA. She works at the Hooters and she has great old time and it works out great for her. She also, um, also this season she gets new boobs. We haven't gotten to that part yet. We're not going to get to that part yet in this video, but she does get new boobs from Jax which in my opinion were way too big and messed up with her figure because she looks so, she's so beautiful in this season. It's crazy how gorgeous she looks. And he like truly destroyed her like in more ways than one. And I just feel bad because like she didn't need to get those boobs done. She looked beautiful and gorgeous already. She was so stunning and they just, I don't know. It just, they were so big for her body. They just didn't look good, but he paid for them. And at first I was kind of like, is she just here for a boob job? And then she's going to go back to Kentucky. And she didn't, she stayed. Why? I don't know. But she stayed after the boob job. And I was like, all right. And Jack kind of keeps like, again, being like, oh, I love Brittany. No, we're going to be together. And no, she's moving in with me. But then on the other end, he'll be like, I want to fuck Lala so bad. I feel like all he needed to do was just bang Lala. And then he could move on with his life. He like, he, he thought of her as like prey. He was like, I just got to get her. And then once I get her, I'll be fine. And he just kept going back and forth this, like the first half of the season going into the second half of the season. And just like, I have to have sex with Lala. And then he has the opportunity to, and he doesn't. I'm like, did you get whiskey dick? What's going on? What happened? <laughs> this season, we find out Jax's foot fetish that he has. Um, he's obsessed with feet. He loves feet, but not just regular feet, not clean feet. No, no, no. He likes it when Brittany kind of does a little jog around in her little sneakers and then comes back in. They're a little sloppy, little messy, little stinky. He likes that. And he just <laughs> slurps on him. Disgusting. But I think Brittany and him truly are like, a like, it seems like Brittany loves to get it on too. Like she's a very sexual person too. So they kind of seem to like work well together. This is also the first season that we learn about what it's like to get jaxed. Actually, no, it's not. We've heard that before. But essentially, Brittany, everybody was worried that Brittany was going to get jaxed. Like, love bomb, essentially. And then just cheated on or ghosted or humiliated. You know, whichever one Jax kind of chose to do for that week. Because, again, flavor of the week, essentially. And Jax is totally has moments where he's so drunk or he is so high off of something especially like I said in the pride parade the pride episode he looks like he has snorted something in the bathroom 
and came back out and was like, <gasps> his like eyes are so red. He's acting insane. His eyes are like big too. They're like, and he, he ends up breaking a bottle. I believe it was a vodka bottle in the sink where the ice is. So in, when you are working at a bar and you know, bar packing, bar backing and all that shit, you, if you ever drop a bottle in the ice and it breaks, you have to empty all the ice out and you have to refill it up, which is a pain in the ass, depending on how big that sink is, it has the ice in it. And you have to do it because ice and glass are the same. They look exactly the same. So you could be serving people glass instead of ice. So that had to happen. And he's just a messy little shit. I mean, that's essentially where we're kind of at with Brittany and Jax. Brittany and Jax's relationship kind of ebbs like like ramps up a little bit more towards the end of this season especially when they go on a trip I thought they were going to I think they go to Mexico I feel like they go to Mexico every fucking season um and their relationship kind of revs up more towards the end of the season and then season five is when like their relationship goes to fucking cuckoo banana land like absolutely nutso and it's fun to watch I'm not gonna lie it's horrible I feel bad for Brittany but it's fun and entertaining tv to watch but this season, they kind of their relationship kind of lies low. Jax honestly also kind of lays low. Like he kind of doesn't. There's not too much going on with him. Um, obviously, there there are things that happen, but it's not as bad as season five for him. Season five is like, dude, you're a dipshit. You've ruined your life. It's 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 pretty hilarious. So then the last thing is just like Tom and Schwartz and their bullshit. Their storyline essentially is that they want to try to work for Lisa Vanderpump and her wine business. And they come in and they try to... I don't understand how LVP gave them... I mean, again, they only have 10%. They don't do anything with that restaurant. Like, whatever planet y'all are living on thinking that, that those two nincompoops have any say with that restaurant and have anything to do with that restaurant other than walking around and being Tom... They don't do anything. They have nothing to that restaurant. Lisa Vanderbilt can do whatever she wants with that restaurant. Whatever she wants. They only own 10% of it. They own nothing, essentially. So I I don't even know if they're making money off of that restaurant. Because the restaurant business is one of the worst businesses to get into. So I don't even know if they're even making money right now. So there's that. But watching this season, it's like, how could they give them a restaurant? A portion of a restaurant? They're imbeciles. Katie, at one point, they're sitting there talking about how they're going to do this presentation for Lisa and for her daughter, Pandora, and Pandora's husband, because they're the ones actually, like, really running the cocktail business for them, I guess you could say. And Katie was like, okay, maybe you guys should go in with, like, a plan and what you want to say. And, like, here's, like, some things that you should do. And the two of them are just like, no, we're good. We're just going to free ball it, essentially. We're just going to walk in and we're going to use our personalities and we're going to be fine. And literally, Katie is like... And they act like they're going to go in and try to get, like, a job job. Like, a full-time job, essentially. But then they end up walking in and being like, oh, well, we can't really do that because we have this going on and the restaurant and we're bartenders and we're this. And they were like, well, I thought you didn't want to be bartenders forever. It's like, well, no, we don't. But, like, you know, maybe we could just be, like, brand ambassadors. And Pandora's like, wait a minute. So you want me to have you go out promote our brand and I don't have to pay you okay like they are so dumb I would love to know what Pandora thinks about them right now I would love to hear what she has to say about those two dumb asses and you know Sandoval is like well you know we go to St. Louis and like I know everybody in St. Louis and Pandora is like that's nice we're international I don't need you in St. Louis like we're going all over the world and we're going in some of the biggest grocery and department stores. So that's stupid and doesn't help me at all. And they're like, uh. And I love Pandora because Pandora is very much like black and white. She's like, you're idiots. You're not helping me. Like, what are we doing? And they really shut him down. They shut them down pretty damn fucking hard. And Sandoval's like, well, anybody can do, anybody can do a presentation. Anybody, any old asshole can come in and make a presentation. You, you don't have any ideas. They came to the meeting with no ideas, no opinions, no thoughts, nothing that would help at all. All of a sudden, they're just like, yeah, like we could like totally like, you know, go around with like, you know, 
LEPY and be like, hey, everybody, like, I could, like, I think at one point Tom Sandoval says something of, like, I could, like, bring, like, out, like, take a glass of LBP, like, up to the bar and, like, start drinking it. And then my friends will be like, ooh, what are you drinking? I'll be like, oh, wow, it's, like, LEP sangria. Like, check this out. Like, you should try some. And then, like, go from there. And it's like, you don't know how to be an adult. You don't know how to be an adult at all. And still, to this day, the fact that anybody gave you loans to take out in order to have a restaurant is beyond me. Beyond me. And Tom has, like, this big ego bullshit thing where he basically is like, oh, uh, Schwartz, uh, don't talk. I'll lead, I'll lead the whole thing. And, like, I'll rescue the whole meeting. And, like, oh, this is why I don't, this is why I didn't want you to talk. And, like, really puts Schwartz down. What's funny is that I feel like if Schwartz, like, actually got the fuck away from Sandoval, he actually could do something and make something of himself and actually be a pretty productive human to society. But he just wants to tag himself to the biggest idiot on the planet. So just keep chugging along. You also slowly start seeing, like, very slowly, clearly, Ariana really seeing Sandoval's flaws and how he doesn't really want to contribute and support to the relationship and doesn't really value her opinion. And you can see Katie just getting further and further disappointed in how lazy they are, how they don't want to put the work in. Oh, we don't, we can't have, I don't want a five, nine to five job. I can't have a nine to five. Like, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you guys are never going to grow the fuck up ever a day in your life. And again, to this day, they still have not grown up. So we see Ariana, they have that little um, dinner that they had for the kid. Like they had a dinner for kids that have never been to a restaurant before and like helping them out and stuff like that. And, you know, Ariana has all these ideas about like how to serve the drinks. So they're cute and fun. And like, it's like a cool experience. And Tom Sandoval is like acting like he came up with the ideas and is also coming up with really stupid ideas and not like validating Ariana. And then Vanderpump comes out and is like, Oh, what are we doing? Like, show me what's going on. And he shows her his ideas and she's like, no, 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 no. Do it this way. And then Ariana's like, yeah, that's how I wanted to do it. She goes, yeah, yeah, listen to Ariana. Don't do what you want to do. You don't make any sense. Listen to Ariana. And Ariana's like, <laughs> it's kind of like with the cocktail book that we find out, I think, which is next season, I believe is the cocktail book. And it's just another example of Ariana has this great idea, has amazing thoughts and opinions and whatever. And Tom Sandoval is like, I'm going to take it over. Because if, honestly, if he didn't have her, he would be where he is right now, which is in a shithole of nothingness with no ideas, no thoughts, no entrepreneurial skills. All he has is the show and his stupid podcast. That's it. And is anybody sponsoring that podcast? I would love to know. The big highlight for me, the first half of this season was when Ariana was having her birthday party and she was very excited about it. And then Peter comes over at the bar and is like, hey, like, so, you know, my birthday's coming up and like, I really want to go do something. So I thought we could like, take the guys to Vegas. And Arya's like, no, no, it's my birthday. Like, what don't you understand? Like, I want you here for my birthday. You're my person. And I want you here to help me. It's a, like my birthday is one of the roughest times of the year because her dad died two years before this was before this season, two years before. And I'm sure last season her birthday sucked ass because Kristen was being a bitch. So you can see her getting very, very mad. And Tom Sandoval is essentially like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to Vegas. Come hell or high water. I'll do whatever I have to do to be able to go to Vegas. And I'm go I'm going. So Ariana better just figure it out. Like we're gonna have to find a way to happen. And Ariana and Katie are like, guys, ships are stupid. Last time they were in Vegas, they did really dumb shit. Jax impregnated someone in Vegas while he was with Stassi. Schwartz kissed somebody in Vegas. Sandoval cheated on Kristen with Ariana in Vegas at the Golden Nugget. And Sandoval's over there being like, we have always done guys trips. Okay. And we're not going to stop now. It's like, grow up grow up like grow the f up it's wild to me that they just they are man children 
at all times. Like they have to go to Vegas, they have to party, they have to do all these things. And it's like, why? Why do you guys have to do that? He's such a self, a selfish person. And he's just always been selfish. And the women are like, oh yeah, they're not going. Schwartz is like, I'm going. Schwartz basically is like, bye, don't care. I'm going, get over it. And basically gaslights Katie into going, which is disturbing and not fun to watch. And this is another example of where everybody's like, oh, Tom is so great. He always did stuff for other people. He did stuff for other people to get what he wanted. Don't get that mistaken. He did bigger things for people so he could get something from them or out of them. Or when he acts like an asshole and they try to point it out, he can go, look at all this that I've done for you. I'm such a good friend. I'm such a good friend. No, you're not. You just try to look like a good friend. And this is one of those times where he was like, I'm going to make sure Ariane has the best birthday possible. I'm going to make sure she's having so much fun and gets drunk and has like the best time. And then I'm going to ask her about baby. And it's like, okay, so you're not making sure she has the best birthday ever because you love her and you want her to have the best birthday ever. You're doing it because you want something out of it, which is my thing about him is everybody's like, oh, he did this, he did that. He gave us money. He helped us there. He planned this party. He did this. He did that. He did those things to make himself feel good, to give an ego boost, to use for later when he needed something and to use against people when they act like an asshole towards him and called his shit out so he could be like I'm a good friend what are you talking about look at all look at this 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 and this that I did and he's done it for every single one of them every single one of them he's done that and this is just one of the first examples that I've spotted of like oh huh interesting how you've done this amazing wonderful thing but you're only doing it so you can get what the fuck you want I just find it interesting and Ariana really needed Sandoval right there and Sandoval is definitely was her like best friend not just like her like not just her boyfriend but definitely they had like a friendship and Ariana gets very vulnerable on camera which makes me laugh that everybody's like oh my god she never gets vulnerable she never shows anything about her life on camera she's always you know hiding things behind the scenes and it's like don't you guys not put everything out there I'm sure there's things that you guys don't put out there on the show she's not allowed to do that too but this whole, like, she has no vulnerability. She does. She has a lot of vulnerability. The thing is, is that her vulnerability is real and it's raw and it's authentic. Whereas some people on the show's vulnerability is horseshit and performative. Ariana's, from what I can remember, has never been, in my opinion, performative. It's been real and raw things that have happened to her. That's why I think people resonate so much with Ariana because it doesn't always feel like, it doesn't honestly hardly ever feel like she's on the show to make a show she's just living her life and here it is and here's the good here's the bad here's what's happening here's what's not happening that's simple not a big deal um but she gets very vulnerable with him on camera and talks about her dad and how it's very important and that every year he would do a he would call her and quote a Lou Gehrig quote and like no the day that she was born was the best day of his life and Tom is always the one that she can talk to and then you know they're having this party and then it's like oh I'm gonna leave you the next day it's like really like you're a dick and Tom is like I'm not going anywhere I'm not going anywhere I'm always gonna be here for you but apparently we're going to construction yard and like crushing shit with bulldozers can I please just do this and Ariana literally is like, I can only explain this so much to you if you don't want to listen and you just want to be an asshole and not be there for me. She's like, just like, you're a child. I can only tell you so many times that this time of year is hard for me. I, my dad, my dad has only been dead for two years. Last year was a shitty year for me. I really need you right now. And she's like, no. I'd rather go do adult bulldozering and get drunk than be with you and support you. What is it with these people? What is it with this group of people that they just can't support their partners? It's crazy to me. The self-centeredness is so disturbing. It's so disturbing. All right. So what we have to look forward to is 
Jack's being right about a lot of things, which is annoying. Stassi makes a comeback, which is interesting and changes the dynamic. Schwartz and Katie uh, go back and forth about wanting to get married and getting engaged. So that becomes a whole thing. And then, yeah, I mean, more shenanigans, honestly, to come. Before we leave, here are some of my random thoughts while I was watching the season uh, up until, again, episode eight. Is Villa Blanca still open? I believe the answer is no. Does Sheena's mom want to be a cast member? Sometimes I think she does. Sometimes I truly think Sheena's mom wants to be a cast member. Uh, so sad that Jax doesn't speak to his mom anymore. In this season, we saw in like one of the first episodes, he talked to his mom and his mom was there and she was joking about all this stuff and about how he was like, he came home with the bus driver and the bus driver was like, your son tried to kiss me and I like was like crying. <laughs> He's just crazy. And she calls him Jason because that's his real name. His real name's Jason. And it was just so, it's so sad that after his dad died, he doesn't talk to his mom anymore. He talks to his sister, but doesn't talk to his dad. Jack sitting on the bus driver at 12 years old. That's hilarious. Lisa having Ken go gangster on Sandoval being a dick was amazing. Like, where's that energy right now? Like, Ken went up to on Sheena's 30th birthday party and went up to Sandoval and was like, do not be disrespectful to my wife because he was being a dick at a meeting. And read him to filth. And he was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sure. Like, whatever, bro. And it's like, where's that energy now? 